Luke chapter 24, verses 4 and 5 say this, And it came to pass, as they were much perplexed thereabout, behold, two men stood by them in shining garments. And as they were afraid and bowed down their faces to the earth, they said unto them, Why seek ye the living among the dead? And the title of this brief sermon is going to be The Living Among the Dead. The Living Among the Dead. We, as God's people, are living. Of course, we are living physically, but we're also living spiritually because the Bible says that we have life through his name because we believe on him. And so because we are alive, we are surrounded by the dead. We are surrounded by people who do not know God and they are spiritually dead. And unfortunately, it seems like a lot of Christians want to seek the living among the dead. We're looking for God's purpose. We're looking to understand more about God, but rather than going to his living word, rather than praying to him who is the living God, we're seeking for the living among the dead. We look to the news cycle to learn more about our God. We look to human sources of wisdom instead of looking to the one that made us. And that's why I want to remind you not to look for the living among the dead. Christ is risen and we need life in us. And what we need to not do is focus on that which is dead, but rather focus on that which is living. Let's look at verse 20. Uh, let's actually go to the beginning of chapter 24 here at verse one. It says, now upon the first day of the week, very early in the morning, they came unto the sepulcher, bringing the spices which they had prepared and certain others with them. Now, these spices probably weren't cheap. They invested a good bit of money into these spices that they had come to adorn Jesus' body with. You see, the only reason why they had brought these spices is because they expected that he would either stay dead for a longer time than what he said, or they might have had some area of doubt in them about his physical resurrection. So they brought spices, because think about it. If you truly knew he would only be in the grave for three days, would you need these spices? No, but there's a part of them that doubted. There's a part of them that did not fully embrace everything that the Lord was saying. And you and I as believers, we have those doubts. We have times where we have a head knowledge of what God says, but we don't always take it fully to heart. We accept it as truth, but we don't live like it. We make plans according to what we see in front of us instead of the substance of things that are hoped for and the evidence that are thing of things that are unseen, like what the Bible says faith is. But let's look at verse two. And they found the stone rolled away from the sepulcher and they entered in and found not the body of the Lord Jesus. So the body that they had bought all these expensive spices to prepare for, and notice it says they rose up early in the morning. So they were probably all night getting these spices ready, making sure they had every little thing laid just in place. They were planning where they were going to put it. They were planning how much of it they were going to use and all that. They had made all these plans, all these expensive plans, and then they find the grave empty and their plan is ruined. You know, sometimes we need to thank God that he ruins our plans because sometimes the plan he ruined was for his glory, meaning that he ruined our inferior plan so that his godly divine superior plan could roll through. Because think about it, what would have strengthened their faith more? Finding the bot, getting their way and finding his body and being able to just do their little thing or finding an empty tomb and seeing the resurrected Jesus. You see, sometimes the plan that you lay out before you to the best of your knowledge, to the best of your ability, it is insufficient and it will not bring God the glory that you think it will bring him. He has a greater plan for you. His thoughts are not our thoughts. His plan is higher than our plan. And so that's why we need to search for his word, search for what he wants us to do. And we need to search for the living not look for the living among the dead. And so when you build your life plan around people that are dead, you build your life plan around fake Bibles that are dead. And yes, I'm talking about all those phony versions, the NIV, the ES, everything that's not the King James, the English version. When you plan your life around dead stuff, when you're going to a dead church, when you're listening to a dead pastor, and believe it or not, you have a lot of pastors who are not saved. Ask them what they believe on salvation. You'll be surprised what you hear. When you are following dead people around, you are not looking for the living like you should. You are looking for the living among the dead. But thank God he ruined their plan. Thank If you have a plan that God ruined, but he got his glory out of something greater, thank God for ruined plans sometimes. Let's continue. Verse four. And it came to pass as they were much perplexed thereabout. 
Let's think about that. It doesn't just say they were a little bit confused. They were much perplexed. They had that, oh, come on, kind of response. Sometimes life feels that way, doesn't it? Where you think you've done everything right. And God just says, nope, not good enough. That's not the plan I have for you. Let's continue. Behold, two men stood by them in shining garments. And as they were afraid and bowed down their faces to the earth, they said unto them, why seek ye the living among the dead? If you want to find Jesus, you're not going to find him in a grave. You're not going to find his word among spiritually dead people. You're not going to find his word in the news cycle. You're not going to find his word on social media. Now, somebody might use social media to proclaim his word. But if you want to find the living, you need to go straight to his word because the Bible says Jesus has the words of life. First John says that Jesus is the word of life. And so if you want to go to the living, you need to find the words of life. Anyway, it says in verse six, he is not here, but is risen. Remember how he spake unto you when he was yet in Galilee. The remember part is very important there. When you study God's word every day, when you pray every day and you do everything you can to strengthen God's, strengthen your relationship with God's word, strengthen God's blessing on your life by following him, you will be able to remember the words he spake unto you. That's why it's important to memorize parts of scripture. You need to pick, if I were you, I personally recommend pick an encouraging verse, pick a verse that will reprove you of your sin, and pick a verse you can use to explain the gospel to, the, to a lost person. Memorize those. The Bible says, thy word have I hid in mine heart. We need to remember the words of God. Verse 7, saying the son of man must be delivered into the hands of sinful men and, cru and be crucified and the third day rise again. So was Jesus accepted by the culture? No. So you as a Christian, can you expect that the culture is always going to accept you? No. But you know what you, sh you should do? Be bold and preach it anyway, because you serve a living God, not a dead God. Our God is so powerful that if you just preach his word, people will believe. People will be saved. Because why? Faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Why does hearing come by the word of God? Because the word of God is living and we should put God's word first and seek God's face always and not seek the living among the dead. God bless you.